Good morning, guys. We are headed out to uh, check traps this morning. It's uh, Thursday the 4th, 5th, I don't even know, oh, no. who cares, 4th, 4th of January 2018. Um, we had some horrid temperatures starting out. We had minus 8. Uh, it is now 25 degrees and so it feels like a tropical monsoon. So we've had a good time. We caught a bobcat, a small mess of coons. We're heading out to check now. Um, really excited. We're, we hit Jerry's farm really hard. Uh, we've got 54 sets out. And anyway, we've got Greg Staggs here. We got Gabe, we got our dog, and we got Aaron in the back. So we're gonna head out, gonna have a lot of fun and hopefully catch a lot of stuff and uh, help the bird and the deer and the quail populations out the best we can. So anyway, stay tuned. You got anything over there, Gabe? No, is this that okay? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go over and check. I need to set a snare up here. We've got uh, caught a rabbit in a bobcat set, and that's usually uh, it's, it'll be a, it's a good sign. I'm okay with. I'd rather obviously have a bobcat, but um, got a set here. Got this big game trail that comes down here. Anyway, I put my uh, dirt hole walk through set there. Um, what I did, I'll try to explain this the best I can, was drill a big, uh, about an 18 inch deep hole under this log. Uh, this trail's running north south here, and there's a little trail coming back behind this log. Made this, put my trap on the trail, but dug the hole, put part of a rabbit and some bait and lure back in there, um, and then blocked it up with this grass here to kind of make the, the, hopefully the bobcat come through uh, instead of seeing it and keeping on going he comes around and sticks around to investigate okay so uh, this is a rub post set um, it's a chewed beaver stick I've, I've found that I really like setting these sets with a, a chewed beaver stick I just think it sh kind of shines it's kind of it just sticks out away from everything else and that's really something that seeing tends to draw a cat's attention and uh, again, I'm using the KOK9 Extreme. Uh, I've got my pan cover. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this. I caught a possum here. It's sitting over there. Get this set, okay. Put my loose jaw down. And I'm gonna place it so the pan is pointing towards my stick. I'm assuming this cat is going to step and get close to it. I got some. I have some uh, bobcat gland lure. I've got using some Jeff Jeff Dunlaps here, and I'm using some bobcat urine on this rock. Using this rock to guide this cat around. We've got a, a, a dam running ac built across this creek here, and this is the only open water on the whole farm. And so I'm assuming we caught three coons here so far. Uh, two. I caught one in this set yesterday. One across the creek, and one in a snare just up this little ravine. So it's a high traffic area. I'm assuming all these game animals are gonna be coming here. Uh, like I said, it's the only open water on the whole farm in this creek to, that I'm aware of, and we've been over most of it this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and bed this trap again. Shouldn't take a whole awful lot. Again, this is a remake. I've caught, this is my second animal I've caught here in this set non-target animals but you know possums and coons they eat they eat eggs as well from quail you know quail and pheasants and that's really the game bird they're trying to promote on this particular piece of property here um, and kind of circle around pick up some loose loose dirt here Okay, again, yeah, I'm just gonna sift that right. I'm 
over the top of that. Go ahead and blend this chain back in. Again, I've got this trap uh, anchored to a 10 foot drag, double swiveled, anchored to a tree over there. Um, so I've got this, got this made up here. I'll block that off just a little better. Pull this stick down. I'm gonna guide his foot. I'm gonna actually go ahead, take a few feathers scatter them around. Um, freshen this up just a little. This, is, this particular lure is Jeff Dunlap's uh, lightning in a bottle. It's glow in the dark. Kind of a cool lure. I really, really like using it. Had good results with it. I'm gonna stick that stick under there. I wanna keep that smell here at the set. I've seen guys before toss it off to the side. I don't like to do that because then you're telling that animal to go somewhere else. Okay. And that's a remake right there. I'm gonna go around to this side. the upwind side. I'm going to spray some urine. This rock. And that's that. This set's complete. All this silence Dear old friend Come to push you to the bitter end And it's a repeat Echo loop oh, oh. Wanna cut it out Tide is turning back at you When you were knocking on your door Nobody got me Okay guys, what we've got going on here is we rolled up onto this set. There was actually a, a almost a mini dirt hole set here. I actually took a half inch um, bit and drove and made a, a dirt hole there with a DeWalt drill. Very subtle actually blended in the set really well. It, was, it was, wasn't even noticeable. It, you had to have been pretty much a cow with a very refined sense of smell to, to know this was here. And we rolled up this morning. The catch circle is here. The, the trap, I haven't even touched the trap yet. This is the first time I've touched it. It was pulled out like that. There's a cowdy, cowdy turd behind, behind me. Uh, we had one and unfortunately he got away. It happens sometimes. Probably had him by a toe or something. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a remake. And the good thing about it is uh, trappers love doing remakes because this, this county was here long enough. He has left a lot of scent. He's probably urinated all over the place. Uh, his glands and, and hair and body has been all over the places he was struggling to get out of the trap for a little bit. And now that he's gone, he's left a scent behind. So we're gonna do a remake here. This was the bed of the trap. We still have a lot of, of peat moss and, and the, the, the trap bed itself is perfectly here. We can probably won't take too much to find the, uh, the actual hole that we drilled in. If not, we'll make us a new one here. But uh, we'll remake this set and show you how it comes along. We'll probably, since, since it's not too tore up, we'll probably use the same modus operandi. We'll probably go in with the exact same type of set that we used to, uh, to attract the first cow to here. And what I'm doing here now, guys, is you can you can feel safe. A lot of guys are scared to handle a trap, especially a, a big trap that's that's capable of holding a a, a county-sized animal. And so a lot of guys are, are scared to hold it. This is called the loose jaw. This is the power jaw. It's held by the dog or or the mechanism that that allows the trap to to work or fire. The springs are what powers the trap underneath. If you hold the trap from below, this loose jaw. If you're above the loose jaw, you can get trapped. If you flip this jaw up and handle this trap from below, and I'm going to put polyfill, this is a, this is a, a space saver so that the dirt can't get in underneath the pan and keep that pan from compressing as the, as the animal steps on the pan. But if you work below that loose jaw, and what I'm doing is you'll hear a click. That click, that audible click allows me to know that that pan is level and night latched, as we say it. Then I'll lower that jaw and now I can, I can bed the trap as I see fit, fit here. 
But uh, don't be scared to, to work with a trap, guys, if you'll just learn how. It's like anything. If you know the, the proper, if you're educated properly, you can work, work with about anything. And I'm actually going to dig this bed out just slightly. The, the, worst, uh, the worst enemy of trapping is that wobble. You can see, see how this trap wobbles? That's because this area has been dug out by the last coyote. Now notice I'm going to flip that loose jaw over so it reminds me that that trap is set. And I don't reach over and grab it with that jaw down. But I'm digging out a little bit more of a what we call a trap bed here so that I can I want that I want that trap to sit in there solid like that okay now I'm happy with it I set my sifter there and because we're dealing with some extreme colds here in the Kansas winter we're in January right now and we've been waking up to negative temps in the mornings uh, what, you know, that's really not that bad as long as it stays a constant temperature. What we're dealing with this week is it's negative temps in the morning. It's going to be above freezing in the afternoon. That allows the frost and everything to start melting. That water sifts down or drifts down into your trap bed, refreezes at night. Now you've got a bed of ice and it keeps your trap from firing. You can have a coyote dancing all over your set. If your trap doesn't fire, it doesn't matter. So we're, we're covering everything with peat moss, and peat moss, the, the reason behind that is it's very, very dry. There's no moisture in this peat moss. In fact, my peat moss is over a year old. I bought it at Lowe's in the garden section a year ago. I sifted it into Rubbermaid tubs and let it sit for about, an, for almost a year. So there's no moisture in that peat moss. Now the bad thing about it is it makes it hard to pack but we're gonna rely on guiding the, the coyote's foot to where we want it to be to, uh, to accomplish our goal. Ideally, you want that trap packed in really, really well. But since I can't really pack dry peat moss, we're just gonna rely on knowing where that pan is, pack it as well as we can, then sift over it, and we'll guide that guide that coyote's foot to that pan as best we can. So now that I've got my trap trap bedded, we're going to go back in here, probably about nine inches in front, maybe probably about three inches to the side. And we're going to. We're gonna make us a really nice little mouse hole here. Guys, the reason I'm going so deep, I'm probably going, I probably went about that deep. That's probably about a 10 inch deep hole. The reason why is I don't, I'm gonna put some gland lure down in that hole here in a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoop it out with a Q-tip, drop it right in that hole. The reason why is that scent, that lure will be down in the hole. The coyote's got to come up here. He's going to smell it as he works this road. He's going to smell it. He wants to come over here and find out what's in that hole, whether it be a mouse or, or part of a vole or, or some food source that they, they prey upon. And he can't just grab it and run. He can't, he can't dine and dash. He's got to sit here and work at that hole. The more he works at that hole, the more he moves his feet, as you see me doing, the more and the better chances I've got of him stepping on that pan we'll have some beautiful Kansas coyote when we come back tomorrow morning. I'm gonna build up just a little bit of natural backing. Backing, B-A-C-K-I-N-G, backing. And the reason why, I don't want it to look too out of place, but I want it to look sort of natural, but I want it to, I want that backing to cause the, the coyote, the dog, to come around here to the front and work this set from the, from the front. There's also, I don't know, I probably didn't mention it, when I dug that hole, I dug it at about a 30 to a 45 degree angle. That positions that dog, that coyote, to come around here. And if, if he has to look down that hole at a certain distance to see down at an angle, that tells me where his nose is. That tells me where his eyes are. It also tells me where his foot is. That's why I've got this, this trap about nine inches back from that hole.
Okay, all we've got to do is lure it up and we're done with the set. So guys, most trappers carry a wide assortment of lures with them. I mean, if it stinks and smells like skunk and makes your wife puke, you can find it in our trap trap uh, supply. This is something that I'm trying. I just bought it at a local trap show a couple couple months ago. I'm gonna dip it into the, onto a Q-tip and drop it into the to that hole that I dug. And we're gonna call it good and hopefully Mr. Coyote is bouncing in our set tomorrow when we come back. Oh, this is